Hi friends, welcome to North Pole TV. My name is Mike and today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin and three minutes isn't long to explain Bitcoin, so let's get started. Um, the first thing to think is that uh, Bitcoin is not a coin, it's not, it's not a bank, no, nothing like that. It's computer code and when you think of Bitcoin as a whole, the, uh, the whole of Bitcoin is the network, the computer network that uh, all run the Bitcoin software, all checking each other's work all the time, it runs 24-7 on the internet, and so like no transaction goes through until thousands of computers say yes, it's okay. All right, so that's, uh, that's how that works. Now, if you yourself were to own some Bitcoin, if you were to buy some Bitcoin and, and hold it, what you would be holding is, this is called a paper wallet, okay? Uh, you can print these from, uh, there's two companies I recommend. One is Bit Address, as you can see. Another one is Coinbase. And uh, with those two companies, you can go to their websites and just print these things up. They're randomly generated. Nobody else knows them. Paper wallet only. There are things uh, called digital wallets that you can put on your cell phone, uh, but we're not gonna talk about those they're less secure and you actually pay a third party for that service. So we're just going to talk about paper wallets, which is a way to store Bitcoin, to invest in Bitcoin for the long ter longer term. All right, so QR codes, you've probably heard of those things. Those are QR codes. You show the public this one, you don't show them that one. These line or letters and numbers underneath the QR codes, those are equal to the QR codes. They're one and the same, same thing. So either one unlocks the whole thing for you. Oh yes, if you lose, if you lose your paper wallet, you're done. Okay, you've lost your, your bitcoins. It's like cash. You you lose this stuff. You lose your cash. It's the same thing. Another thing to uh, be aware of is that Bitcoin is open source software, so anybody can look at it, and it's, it makes it really tough to hack because so many people can see what's going on. Um, uh, there's no company, no head office. It's not it's not like a company. It's it's like a internet web, a net net. You know, it's kind of like who owns the internet. Next thing we're going to talk about is the blockchain. Now the blockchain is a uh, uh, programming device that Satoshi, who is the, in, the inventor, creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi came up with. It's quite brilliant. It's, it's really simple, but it's, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, what it is, the blockchain is simply a continuous ledger or, or long, ongoing written record of every single bit, Bitcoin transaction ever made from the very first Satoshi transaction, when he made his first, mined his first uh, Bitcoin, uh, till the most recent, you know, a tenth of a second ago. Uh, every single transaction is written into that uh, blockchain and uh, this network of computers have access to that blockchain at all times, and they so they can check everything. They can see who had block, who had, who had bitcoins, and who does not. You know. All. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is how to obtain bitcoin. There's tons of ways to do it online and, and work for somebody who pays bitcoin. You can even mine bitcoin, which is mean you have to be a computer wizard with all kinds of fancy computers. We're just going to make it simple and talk about how to purchase bitcoin from an ATM with a paper wallet. Okay. ATMs, they're comfortable, they're safe. If you live in a city, you just just Google uh, Bitcoin ATM and you'll find all kinds of them, one, the closest one to you to find it. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna talk about here is uh, the benefits of Bitcoin. Why are we doing this? And uh, I'm gonna have to go quickly through this. <laughs> okay, so the, the first thing is that the Bitcoin eliminates the need for costly third-party banks to, uh, to store or send money because they can charge you good fees for doing that kind of thing. Uh, Bitcoin eliminates the need for bank account for a bank account or even ID to store or send money. And apparently, about 40, 35, 40 percent of the people in the world do not have a bank account. So, so that's a benefit to them. They can actually be their own banker with Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is a deflationary currency. Deflationary, not inflationary, like deck-backed uh, fiat currency that the Canadian dollar is and the American dollar is. Most currencies in the world, almost all, are debt-backed currencies. Um, but this is a currency that is deflationary. That means that there's only 21 million Bitcoins ever going to be in existence. Right now, there's 16 million. And the last thing here is that uh, Bitcoin is a, an excellent way to take power out of the hands of the parasitic global banksters who've been running this planet for hundreds of years and uh, take that power out of their hands and put it back in the people's hands. And that's a really powerful weapon, I think. So uh, a lot of people, you know, you just think everything has to be government controlled. No, that's, the, that's horrible. We want to have people with the power, not the governments. All right. Thank you very much for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bitcoin away.